Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, the Droodles Blitz, and in today's video, we are going to be bedoinkering and bedonkering the enemy team with the Sheridan. This is one of my favorite tier 10s out there, and it's a very simple answer to why. It's got alpha, it's got mobility, gun depression, view range, everything you'd want this vehicle has. It doesn't have the most DPM, like 2500 with me running Cali, but to be fair, that's still plenty of DPM, judging that this vehicle gets 560 damage per shot. That's pretty dang beefy. I mean, that's more alpha than any other medium or light tank you will ever come up against. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's also got the most view range in the game. It's just so fantastic. So uh, I've always loved the Sheridan. I mean, I've loved the Sheridan before Wargaming buffed it originally. It's just always been a super fun tank. The only time I didn't like the Sheridan was when it originally existed with the missiles because it just felt cheap, you know, shooting somebody over a ridge or being shot while in cover, you know, using your vehicle's haul down capabilities and then somebody just lobs a missile over the hill. Definitely one of the most uh, unfun moments of Blitz for me, so I'm very happy that Wargaming at least uh, returned back to normality with the game being on a 2D scale, basically. Now, we got a Waffenträger all the way at the back of the map, and boom, there you go, very easy shot into the waffle, 508 damage, and we back in the cover. I just love how easy it is to just connect a shell into the enemy with the Sheridan. It's not like there's bad aiming time or it's dispersion. Like, it's dispersion is bad. Don't get me wrong. The dispersion's really bad. But you'll notice that the uh, the aiming time's not too bad, which means that you can very easily just connect shells like that right there onto the enemy Ag Pantry 100, get your reload back, and start shooting again. Another thing a lot of people don't know about the Sheridan, or I guess just don't really realize, is that it actually carries the most heat pen out of any mobile tank in Tier 10. So, uh, for example, your Leopard 1 has 330. 30 millimeters of heat pen. The Sheridan has 341. That's quite a big advantage. And uh, you can definitely use that advantage in the battlefield if you uh, understand the strengths that it does carry. Now we got the VK-72 off to the side. We also got the Bat Chat right there. And boom, Bat Chat shoots me for 277. I hit him back for 617. That is double the damage. That's just insane. And again, we're not done yet. We're going to drive straight over towards this boss shot town because I have a feeling it's going to be a free little bit of damage. Hello. Oh, there he is. Thank you very much for 655 of your hit points. Again, I have received zero in return. And all our T-22 medium needs to do is poke this guy, finish him off. We got the VK-72 off to the side while that's going on. And, uh, well, I'm trying to figure out what the smartest decision is. I'm hoping that this T-22 plays smart and takes advantage of, uh, of the VK. But it looks like this guy doesn't really understand what he's doing. I'm going to be real. Well, well, I think we're doing pretty good anyway. This is a very, very easy win at this point. We got three more seconds left on our reload. And a Badoop. There you go. 593 hit points. T-22, did you... I don't know where that T-22 shot went, but I'm going to leave. Goodbye. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, we know what's left. It's the Yag and the T-95. I was actually under the inclination that the Yag was still at the back of the map, but it seems that no, the Yag's actually moved quite a bit. Well, I'm going to be using the great mobility this tank has to make our way straight towards this 95. And... Uh, Badoop. Oh, 708 damage right there. I doubt that that player enjoyed that a lot. Another fantastic example of the Sheridan just not caring. It's alpha. Everything is so nice in the tank. Hello. Goodbye. 288 damage into you. And, uh, I mean, is there anything else I need to say? This was a 4,860 damage battle. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get any more damage out this game, but hey, if we load heat shells, we might, uh, well, just, oh, really cringe. I was kind of hoping that would pen, but I can't really complain. We still did really good this battle and showcased where the Sheridan is just such a fun vehicle. I always find it weird, and maybe you can let me know in the comments if you're struggling, why you're struggling with this vehicle, but I've always found it weird that the Sheridan is one of the uh, tier 10s that actually struggles to do very well, because to me, I've always thought of it as great penetration, pretty good accuracy for the gun that it carries, great mobility, fantastic camouflage because it's a light, it's got gun depression, it's got everything you would want on a light tank. So it, it always does get me a little surprised when I see the statistics of this tank performing so low. And I think the, the major reason that at least I have come to conclude is down to the fact that players don't understand positioning with this vehicle. And they will either 
go too aggressive, thinking that its alpha is amazing, and then get rushed by a medium that has more DPM. I think that's one of the big downsides of a lot of people using this tank. One thing just keep as advice is that this is not a frontline tank. It, it can play frontline, but you don't want to keep it as the main focus. You want this to be the little annoying tank that just goes... Uh, well, actually, let's go for the uh, the 140. You just want it to be that tank, the one that just taps you for 470 and then backs in the cover and doesn't get shot again. You don't want to be the main center of attention because when you are, then you're making yourself a very, very easy target for the enemy to shoot at. Now, we are obviously reloaded. I'm hoping that we didn't get... Ah, we did. That's cringe. Okay, well, let's back up because obviously I don't want to be uh, in a bad situation here. Now, judging that majority of the team appears to have gone towards A side of the map, we're just going to leave and start heading towards the mouse. This mouse appears to be like average 40 percenter that pushes alone, thinks it's a smart idea, yells at his team after he dies, you know, those kind of players. Which, uh, oh, well, you also got the grill over here. Why? Why, though? <laughs> just interesting. Uh, let's go for a shot into that grill. Unfortunately, we got shot back, but again, we've got so much alpha that we can literally out-trade the grill. And uh, I don't think that player enjoyed that all too much. Long live the grill! So we got the uh, mouse right here, who we're just gonna tap a heat shell right into the upper plate of. And, oh boy, that is a very, very nasty tap at that. 1,065 damage dealt, but again, we're not done yet. We've got a couple more seconds left on our reload. Three, two, one, and badonk. There you go. 530 maxual tap, even with a maxual, it still is a pretty high chance of killing him. And, I mean, again, this is just showcasing where the gun on the Sheridan just hits so hard. People don't realize it, but y you don't mess with the Sheridan gun. You really don't. So we got the 62A off to the side, we got the E100 driving right over the hill, and boom, easy 590 tap into the E100. I thought for a second he shot me, but then I realized it wasn't him. Although, it's actually just about as bad because our driver got killed, which really, really sucks. I mean, we're winning this quite easily, at least what I see. We've got a lot of tanks left, they've lost their one TD. Although, you know what, we've lost two tier 10s as well. I can't say our team's doing great, I really can't. They're, they're actually not doing great. Uh, now that I should word it like that, especially with our E100 just losing health for no reason. Uh, and the two T100 LTs, it appears. Definitely something I need to be careful about. But we were able to get our driver finally back. Oh, it's not two T100 LTs. But I don't want to deal with the enemy LT, should I say. Uh, oh, you know what? You know what? This player, let's see if we can HEM. Fire! What's cringe? I mean, we still took 300 damage off of the, sh the LT, which did a lot of damage. And the good news is that it appears that with our E100 uh, doing whatever the heck he is doing, we can clear the enemy T100, and hopefully our E100 will, which he did, connect the shell. And there you go. That's a pretty easy win. This game was a little weird for a moment when watching whatever the heck just happened go down there, but in the end, we were still able to do a pretty solid chunk of damage. I think we did over 3,000, especially with that fire, maybe even 4,000. And uh, it's just the Sheridan. Th that's all it is. The Sheridan is such a fantastic tier 10. 3,899 damage with this battle. No ace or anything like that, but that's expected. This is tier 10 after all. So I've always loved the Sheridan because of exactly what you saw here. Wargaming increasing the mobility, increasing the DPM, or whatever they're going to do to the Sheridan. It, what I showcased here would not have changed last update or the update before. The Sheridan's just always been a really good tank at bedonkering and driving away. And as long as you understand that very simple play style, it, it is a very easy tank to drive, but it definitely requires a specific set of skills uh, because if you don't understand map positioning, situational awareness, when to poke, who to shoot, it, it can be very tricky. So I really like the Sheridan. I'm definitely planning on making a full down review in the future, but hopefully you enjoyed today's video. And if you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.